Yo guys, what is going on? I'm One Fall and today we have another review. We're going to be taking a closer look at team of the season so far, Lorenzo Insigne. And as you guys can see, I did use him in this team. I used him at the striker position in the 4-4-2 formation, but mainly as a central attacking mid in the 4-2-3-1 formation. Now, he has a force, the weak foot, force skill moves, he's right footed, he has high medium work rates and the height of 5 foot 4. If we take a closer look at his in-game stats, we can see that he should be very fast. Has very well-rounded shooting stats with 90 finishing, being the worst of the important finishing stats. Insanely good passing, insanely good dribbling, 19 agility, balance, ball 26 dribbling with a height of 5 foot 4, so this is going to be interesting. No heading accuracy or not a lot heading accuracy at 67, but he's also not going to need it. Very good stamina at 99, not the best strength and aggression though. But how is he in game? I'm going to tell you now. Alright, so team of the season, Lorenzo Insigne is a very good and insanely fun card to use. I gotta admit though, at first I needed to get used to the card, but at the end I think I got the full potential out of it. So as always, let's start with the chemistry style I would apply on him and the traits he has. So I played him with the finisher chemistry style, but I think looking back at it, the best chemistry style would be hunter chemistry style to boost his sprint speed as much as possible and also give him nearly the same shooting boost. I think I did not really feel the physical boost at all, he still was very weak, I can already tell you that. He doesn't need the dribbling and he doesn't need the passing, so I think hunter really does make sense. Now quickly to his trades, well he only does have one, but it's one of the best ones in the game, he has the finesse shot trade. Alright, but now let's talk about the best thing about the card. It's not a surprise, but it is his dribbling. So with the height of 5 foot 4 and the stats he has, 19 agility, 99 balance, 99 ball control, 96 dribbling, he really does feel amazing on the ball. And I played him with cards like Foot Birthday, Mbappé, Team of the Season, Sancho and Gold, Neymar. And let me tell you, he can easily keep up with the best cards in the game dribbling wise. At least if we're only talking about left stick dribbling. He also has the force of skill moves, so you can rely on the heel to heel, but also the standing scoop turn, the burber spin, or the lacro cat. Sadly, he does not have the 5 star skill moves though. So, at the end, for dribbling, he's just a 10 out of 10. Now, let's quickly talk about his pace. So, he is very fast. What a surprise, especially his acceleration is very good. But you guys are gonna see a clip, I think it's the upcoming one here, where he's actually gonna get caught up very easy by Regulon. But I think this is just even 20. But you also might help, or it might help, if you use the Hunter Chemistry style. So, go for the Hunter Chemistry style to boost the sprint speed as much as possible. Now let's talk about his positioning and his shooting or finishing. So with him having high beating work rates and 99 attack positioning, he's always going to be at the right place at the right time. Doesn't matter if you play him striker or central attacking mid. This is just the perfect combination in my opinion. Your guys are also going to see some great runs in the review here anyways. So his positioning is very good. Now to his shooting, which was a bit weird. Now his finesse shots are very good, as you guys see in the clips. But his power shots for some weird reason were not that great. You guys are gonna see some examples here where I was not really too happy with his shooting or finishing. So we all know that FIFA 20 is inconsistent, but for some reason his shooting was even more inconsistent compared to some other cards. It still was very good, as you guys saw, he scored 11 goals in 5 games. But still, I think shooting is not that great, it's still good, but it's not top tier. His forced weak foot also felt like a forced weak foot, it wasn't the best, but you know, you can score with his left foot as well, so that's good to have. Now to another great thing about the card, it was his passing without a doubt. As a central attacking mid, his passing is just perfect. You guys are gonna see some clips here again, where his passing is just on point and it's exactly what you want for a central attacking mid, at least I want perfect passing for my central attacking mid and let me tell you, Lorenzo Insigne gives you exactly that. Now at last, to his physical. So let's start with the positive, he has 99 stamina so he can easily last for 90 minutes and even if the game goes into extra time, Lorenzo Insigne, team of the season, does not get tired at all, so that's a very big positive. But now to his strength and aggression, which isn't really good, that combined with the height of 5'5", five five, let me tell you, he's very weak. If you want to try him, don't let defenders touch you, because you're going to lose the ball 99% of the time. But still, you know, he makes it up with other attributes he has. Now to the conclusion, so how should you use that Lorenzo Insigne card? I think you want to play him in the central attacking mid position. You want to walk onto your opponent's defensive line and do those quick kill turns because if you do not have the worst gameplay ever, you can actually react what your 
opponent is doing because his dribbling is that good. And you want to look for a deadly pass as you guys are going to see in this clip here. Now he has very good pace but with him being very weak he does not feel that fast because as soon as someone touches him he basically loses the ball. His dribbling is a 10 out of 10 as I said before, his shooting is very good, it's not top tier, it is very good as you guys saw in the clips anyways. His passing is very good again and his physically is what it is, you know, he's very weak but he has the 99 stamina. Now for the rating he's gonna get the 8.5 out of 10 because, you know, he's missing the 5 star weak foot or the 5 star skills but he still is very good on the very quality card. Now for the value for money rating he's gonna get an 8.5 as well because at 400,000 coins on Xbox and 460,000 coins on Playstation he's actually not that expensive at least for the attributes or the skills he offers. Now guys thank you for watching if you liked the video the video the video make sure to drop a thumbs up also you can sub for free so you don't miss any upcoming uploads. Now again guys thank you for watching stay healthy stay safe and see you in the next review.